Hey folks, welcome back to another lesson and this one is uh, the more calculation one. So we're going to look at how to use uh, something called Snell's Law and some uh, worked examples basically. So we're going to state the general form of Snell's Law and then use Snell's Law to solve refraction problems. Um, so first of all, I can't remember if I've mentioned this to you, but Snell's Law is simply n is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. And if you were to plot this as a graph with sine theta 1 on the y-axis, and sine theta 2 on the x-axis, you get a nice straight line, and the gradient of this line gives you the refractive index. Another thing to remember is that 1 usually refers to the medium in air, and 2 usually refers to the medium in glass. So a few reminders there about Snell's law. Okay, so first of all, how do we get the general form of Snell's law? So if we look at a diagram, we've got a glass and we've got a light ray going from the glass into the air. So notice that theta 2 is now the angle of incidence and theta 1 is the angle of refraction. OK, so this is where you have to be really clear that theta 1 or 1 is always for the angle in the air and 2 is always the angle for the material, usually glass. Now, if we write this out, then we get n2 over n1 is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. Now, how do we get that simple form where it was just n2 is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2? Well, remember that the refractive index of air is actually just equal to 1, isn't it? So if you put 1 underneath that, anything divided by 1 is just itself. So that's how you get n2 or n is equal to sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. So the more usual way we write Snell's law is like this. And the reason why the n doesn't disappear is because 1 is usually some other material other than glass. OK, so that's why I put n is in air or medium 1 there. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. And you can see this equation is fairly straightforward to use. You're probably going to be doing a wee bit of rearrangement to get whatever it is that you want to calculate. OK, so let's have a look at our wee uh, worked example here. So uh, as always, we're using a KFC technique, but we have to be careful here because it says light strikes the internal surface of the glass block at an angle of 38 degrees to normal. So this is actually light inside the glass block. So this angle is actually inside the glass. So it means this is actually theta 2, because remember, theta 2 is always the angle in the glass. So when we do a KFC with the following, uh, theta 2 is 38 degrees, N2 is the refractive index of the glass, and N1, remember, is the refractive index of air. And so we're asked to find theta 1, which is the angle at which the light exits the glass. OK, now that's a trick to that question. So that's why I'm saying to you, be very clear in your head about what theta 1 and theta 2 means. Once you've done that, it's quite straightforward then, because you write down your equation. You make sure you plug in the quantities in the right part. And again, I've not rounded up my answer here. And then you take the sine inverse of that to give you theta 1 is 91.66 or rounded to 97 degrees. So just make sure that you very carefully check your angles before you plug them into your calculation. Now, we can, of course, make these questions a bit more trickier by getting you to use some of your trigonometry rules or geometry rules. So let's look at the second example. So light is incident on a prism at 60 degrees. So you can see this is our incident angle here. And we're told the refractive in index of the glass is 1.5. So this is the refractiveness of this glass here. Number one, calculate the angle of refraction for the incident ray of 60 degrees. And number two, the angle at which the light ray leaves the prism. So first of all, the angle of refraction would be this angle here. So let me just draw this in so you can see a bit more clearly. clearly. So this is the very first thing we want to do is work out this angle. So let's try and do that. You can do this one yourself before you look at the answer. I recommend you try it, but I'll show you the answer on the next slide. So to get that, it's fairly straightforward because here, theta 1 is just 60 and we want theta 2. So remember our equation, n, n1 sine theta 1, n2 sine theta 2. Remember the refractive index of air is 1, so it's multiplied by sine 60. And the refractive index of glass is 1.5. I 
and we want the, the angle within the glass, so that's why it's theta 2. If we work that out, hopefully you know how to rearrange that equation, we get 35.3, which is rounded to 35 degrees. So we now know this angle here is 35 degrees. So fairly straightforward one, I hope. Let's look at the next part. So the angle at which the light ray leaves the prism. So really, we want this angle here. Now, this is where it might get a wee bit confusing, but I want you to forget about how we labeled the angle here, because we're now looking at a separate part of the diagram, and I'm going to call this one theta 1 again, because it is the angle in the air. Now, in order to get angle theta 1, we have to know what this angle is here. And this one here, I'm going to call theta 2. So don't get it mixed up. We're not doing anything with this part. We're done with this to some extent. We're now looking at another interface. So that's why I can use theta 1 and theta 2 again. Now, we have a problem because we don't have theta 2, which we know we need to calculate theta 1. However, we do know what this angle is because we've already calculated it from before. And we also know what this angle is. So this is where our geometry comes in. So we know that's 35 degrees. So because this whole thing is 90 degrees, then this must be 55 degrees itself. OK, I hope that's fairly obvious to you. Now, using the angles in the top triangle, so that means we are using this triangle here. OK, we have 55 plus 20 minus 180, because remember, the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180, which gives us 105 degrees. And we're almost there. Because to get the remainder, it must be 105 minus 90 degrees, because if you think about it, this whole thing here is 105. So to get this wee bit here, we subtract 90, because remember, the normal, I know it doesn't look like it, is always 90 to the interface. And that gives us 15 degrees. Now, I know that's not straightforward. So please just play the video again, the slide again, draw out the angles as I explain it, and hopefully it'll be a bit, become a bit more clearer. So there's an angle 15.3 degrees, or we're just going to call it 15 degrees. So once we've done that, it's fairly straightforward. We plug in our uh, quantities, just making sure we get the right theta ones and theta two, and we get the angle is 23 degrees. And um, as a wee check, remember in the previous lesson, I said to you that going from uh, glass into air, the angle of uh, refraction will always be greater than the angle of incidence. We can see that's true. OK. Now, I know that last question was pretty tricky, so let's show you an exam question to show you that actually they're not always that bad. So have a go at this question here yourself. See if you can work it out. And I'll take you the answer through on the next slide. OK, so the question tells us show that the refractive index of the glass ray is 1.89 degrees. Now, the tricky bit for this question is working out which angle is which. So hopefully you remember we always measure an angle from the normal to the light ray. So that means this one here is theta 1. And from the normal to the light ray. So this means this one is theta 2 because it's within the glass or the prism. So then we can use our equation. N is sine theta 1 and uh, we plug in the numbers. Now remember that the refractive index in air is also equal to 1. So if we're writing out this properly, we would probably do N over 1. And remember, anything divided by 1 is just itself. So that's how we get 1.89. So make sure you know how to get this and why I put one underneath there and how I got these angles as well. And remember, it's a show question, so you do have to write the answer as your very last step. OK, and this is a lot of applications, refractive index, because if you can get a negative refractive index, you can actually make a cloak of invisibility. We also need to know about refractive index, because if you've got broadband fibre, internet at home that uses glass fiber 
and so we need to know about the refractive index of glass to make your internet work and work well. And then finally, uh, one downside to making invisibility cloaks is that by the Geneva Convention, it is actually banned. So even if you had an invisibility cloak, you wouldn't be able to use it for military purposes, at least not knowingly anyway. 